Hi and welcome to my channel. I am Tammy Osterk, the designer at badbobbin.com. Today I am going to show you how to make this 3D or steampunk 3D hair bun holder. So it's called the steampunk 3D hair bun holder and it uses the rivets and there's a part one which is the little pieces on top and then part two which is the base of it and you'll learn how to stitch it all out. I happen to do this in gold, so you, uh, the gold thread, so little little trouble with it, but I think it turned out pretty cool. And I used a uh, shimmer vinyl, which can be, there's many different places that do have the shimmer. I know a new one that's just come out with the shimmer is uh, Glitterbug Fairy, and it's a really cute like shimmery sand and then I know that you know my punk broidery also has this brown and a couple other places I think may carry this but I know those two for sure so um, check them out if you want to and follow me keep going and we'll show you how to make this cute steampunk 3d hair bun holder by badbobbin.com so I'll meet you over at the cutting table and show you what we need all right, and we're at the cutting table to make our uh, Steampunk 3D hair bun cover. And this is kind of kind of what it looks like together. I kind of printed it out on my own program again. But it's separate. It's two different files. You're going to do number one file here. And these are the three different uh, cogs, sprockets, gears, whatever you want to call them. These are the three that we're going to uh, make first. And then we're going to cut these out. And then they will be attached to our other part. So on the first part, um, I'm going to do a felt backing. And for the top vinyl, you can do any way you want to do this as well. This is another one of those which you can do any way, however you choose, whatever kind of fabric you choose. You can choose black fabric too and do it with different uh, thread color. I'm doing two different colors because I want my pieces on the top to kind of pop a little bit. So I'm happy, uh, happen to have this like a brownish, and, and different coppery, see the different sheens and tones it, it gets on it. So this will be kind of, it's actually a brown, um, brown, what do they call this? Holographic, I think it's called. Um, I've got so many vinyls and have been sitting for so long, I can't remember the names of half of them anymore. So this is a, it's a brown color. You can kind of see it brownish, um, brassy kind of kind of color to it. So I'm going to use that for the three pieces that are separate. Once once they're all stitched, then cut them separately and they'll be going on top. So it's two and a half by three and a half. And then the main part, which is our hair bun part, um, I have my felt piece for the backing and that's four and a half by three and a half. And the top uh, vinyl piece is four and a half by three and a half also. And this one here, I happen to have a brown um, Different companies call it different names. So this could be sand, this could be metallic sand, it could be, um, what's the other word they call I forgot what the other one they call it. So it's, it's, it's got a um, shimmer kind of look to it. Some of them call it sand and there's another name too for it. So depending on what company you buy from, they have different names. I'm not sure where I got this one, possibly, um, Double H, but I know they just went out of business, so um, I got this one a while ago from them, I think. But I know um, if I didn't get it from them, I'm not sure if it was them I got it or um, My Punk Broidery, I think, carries this as well. And the, I mean, they, get, they have this in red. I know I've gotten it from them in red, so pretty sure this is like a brown. So I thought I'd do this as my back piece, and then this is going to go on top. So I think it kind of kind of will, will pop a little bit. And then I'm using the rivets to hold um, these cogs, gears, <laughs> um, sprockets. These will be held on to the main piece with rivets. And these come in a box like this, different ways. They'll be um, in the comments, I'm sure, or in the uh, description. I'll go ahead and put a link there. I don't, I'm not an affiliate of them or anything, but I know um, Amazon has these for a pretty decent, it comes in this little set like this too, so. And there's different sizes, so depend, you know, you can use the different sizes too, since we're gonna have a tiny one, we may need the small one, and up to the larger one. And I'm gonna use the brass looking one, so I'm glad it came in three different color thing. So I think the brass thing would look kinda cool for the steampunk. And I am going to use a gold thread. So I think, um, 
I think I'll use a gold thread on these and see what happens. The It's kind of a, uh, not a solid thread or a solid stitch, fill stitch. It's actually a sketch. So it'll kind of, this will be showing through a little bit. So the fabrics will show through. So I have my gold thread I'm going to use. We have our hole punch for later for the um, sides where the our hair pin is going to go through. And then I also have using the hole punch for our rivets, which will be a smaller hole. So when we get to that part, I'll show you. So four and a half by three and a half and two and a half by three and a half. This one will be done first and then we'll move on to this one and have this ready to go. Four, and, four by four hoop, tear away stabilizer and our scissors and hemostats for pulling out stabilizer. So we're all ready and we'll see you at the machine. All right, we're at the machine and we're about to do part one of the uh, Steampunk 3D hair bun holder. So we're only going to do the first part because we have to cut this out. Actually, you can do either way because the putting it together is done out of the hoop. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and do this part here. I have it in my hoop already, or uh, sorry, my machine ready to go. I'm using a metallic gold, so I am going to slow down the machine. You can use any color you want. You can use the black that it shows. You can use a gray. You can use, you know, a, a contrasting, which is what I am actually doing on top of this, like I said. So here we go. It's going to do um, our placement box first. And then after the placement box, we'll go ahead and lay down our vinyl and do our uh, gold cogs. Right. I'm going to go ahead and tack this down. You can either tape it. I'm going to use a tacky spray like I always do. So I'm going to um, go ahead and spray it. All right. New studio, so I go outside now. <laughs> I'll place that inside the box. There we go. It's now going to stitch out our cog wheels or gears, whatever you want to call them. And it's going to do the metallic gold. So like I said, I'm going to slow the machine down, but it'll be fast because I'll speed up the video. So hopefully, fingers crossed, no, um, no breaks. All right, so we have the gold done. Well, it looks pretty cool in the gold. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add the back. You can add a back if you want, or you can leave it without a back. You don't have to put the felt on the backing. It is up to you if you want it a little bit thicker to stand out on the 3D or, you know, or just a thin, thin little cog on top of your um, hair bun. But I'm gonna go ahead and add the backing to it. And I did a little bit of the lighter. This. Uh, Vinyl is a, a little bit thinner, so it's kind of pulling a little bit, but it's not going to be too bad because we're actually going to cut them out anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and um, spray my uh, felt. Alrighty. And I'm going to go ahead and add that felt to the back side. Center it. 
and lightly, you know, you don't want to pull on your stabilizer. And then when you get turned back over, then go ahead and press down to make sure it's secure. It's secure, it's not going anywhere. Put it back in the machine and it's going to run the outline around the cogs. And then it's going to do two little center parts um, so we know where to put our rivet. So we'll finish this. All right, a little bit of a little bit of trouble there with the thread, but we got it situated. No problem. It caught a different one. So the back looks um, okay, but we're gonna, you know, nobody's gonna see this part or the back of this. It'll be uh, attached with the um, rivets and stuff. So we're gonna clean this up. So I'm gonna um, gently tear this out because what I'm gonna do while I'm I'm gonna use this hoop to do the other part of the uh, hair bun holder. So I'm gonna use this corner over here. I will have my pattern set up and moved over to this corner. And while that's stitching out, I'm gonna cut these out and then I will show them to you. And then we'll continue with the rest of our pattern. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're here for the second part of our Steampunk 3D uh, hair bun holder. And it's going to be the bottom part where we're actually goes onto the hair. And the first part is can either be a tack down or it can be your placement line. Um, since it's in a four by four hoop, you kind of know it's, you need that big of a, a piece of fabric. Or if you're doing it like I am in here, I've moved it all the way to my corner. So I know this piece has to sit right in my corner and I know where my lines are to line it up. So I didn't, don't need an actual placement line, but some may need that. So you can either do your next step as a placement or a tack down. I'm gonna do it as my tack down. I'm gonna use my spray, uh, tacky spray again. and I'll line it up right in the corner of my hoop. And I always um, have my little marks on here and I'm, I always go, because of the, how I cut my material, I go about a quarter of an inch over the lines on each side to line it up in there. And that's plenty. There we go. So my first um, stitch is gonna be a tack down and I've decided to use a brown for my tack down. And then for my cog wheels or my gears, I'm going to use um, the metallic gold again. Fingers crossed because we we're having trouble last time. Um, it is a temperamental metallic thread using it. Some people have luck with it, some don't. Some vinyls work well with it, some don't. Some fabrics work well. It is just a tough thing to use. Um, and I'm having a little bit of trouble, but hopefully we'll get through it okay on this next one. So here we go. I'm going to do a tack down and then it's going to go right into sewing the cog wheels.
right, we've done the gold. A little bit of trouble again, but we've, we've got it so far. There's the back. Now it's time to add our back piece. I use felt and I'm gonna go ahead and tacky spray this as well, same thing. And it's going to next uh, do our little uh, marks where we're gonna put our rivets, which actually won't be inside this one, be a little bit lower. And uh, I'll be right back after I spray this. All right. I'm gonna use the lighter a little bit to clean it up. Get those threads from hanging on the outside. It'll make the little knots so the threads won't fray on me. There we go. We're gonna center this, line it up, lightly tack down, turn it over, and press down to secure it. Going to clip that. Alrighty, and we're gonna do, like I said, the centers to know where to put our rivets and the final outline and the um, eyelets on where our uh, stick is gonna go. Here we go. All right, we are done. We're done with the stitch part. That's our front. We have our little marks here and where to put our uh, 3D pieces. The back shows it as well. I will take this to the cutting table and we'll finish the rest at the cutting table. All right, we're at the cutting table. So I did cut my three pieces out and um, I, I did some little uh, little edges. You can do it round if you want. Like this one was really small, so I made it round, this one. And then this one here, um, I, I snipped it, you know, I, I cut into it to get it, to, you know, to do some little more detail on it. So here's my three pieces, and they're all done and cut out. And then the piece here that we just finished, I'm going to tear it out of the stabilizer, take it all off, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, trim some threads and do our little lighter thing to singe them, and I'm going to cut it out. Okay, we're all done, and uh, we'll be able to put uh, our rivets, make our holes. You can make it either with your, uh, I'm getting stuck on my words here, <laughs> sorry, um, our leather punch, so this is a leather punch, or in the little kit also comes a punch that you can use with the hammer, and then we also have our rivet setter. So here's the setter that comes with it, or I do have the big cam snap here, so, or the uh, press. So, let's see what we can do here. Okay, I'll bring, about, I'll bring that in as well, so we can do that, and then um, I have this so we can do it this way. So if I did, I don't have my hammer. I forgot to grab my hammer, but uh, if you use the punch here, it does have the end uh, right there and you would just go ahead and place your piece like on a piece of wood or something that's good. You don't like, you see the holes here? So you don't want to go um, on your board because you'll end up with the punch right through it. So I always use the piece of wood and then you just set it right through the hole. So there are marks and there's a, you can barely see it. You can use a different color so you can see it. There are marks as to where, uh, you know, like we have it on the back, you see it, as to where you want to punch that hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my punch. I need to uh, reset it. 
and I have it set at uh, 330 seconds for this one. So I'm going to punch my holes also in the actual headband part and in our little accent pieces. Actually, I'm going to use the tiny, I'm going to go smaller on my holes, I forgot, I'm going smaller on my little rivets. I'm doing the one with the normal, um, I, sent, I think this is the, the 3 16 and then this one's the actual smaller one, 3 30 seconds. So I'm going to go with the smaller for that one. And I kind of messed up on that one. So hopefully my rivet won't go through, I have a feeling it will. We shall learn by my mistakes, huh? <laughs> so, a little hole there. And I just got the center. There we go. A little hard to see. I should have used a different color. And we'll go ahead and do this one. So we have all our holes ready to go, and our spark sprockets, our cog wheels are going to go, whichever we want to call it, are going to go together. And so I have my rivets ready to go. Oh, whoops, let's do the holes here. So that one, I do the 11 and 64, it's the largest hole that I have for this one. So I'm going to punch those holes out too. There we go. Those are fun. And then if you want, you can always singe a little bit again where you cut your holes just in case um, some threads were hanging and you just want to singe them again so that they don't, don't unravel on you. But I think with our rivets, we're going to actually pinch them together. It shouldn't ravel. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our larger one. And you take the rivet and we're going to put it through the cog right there. And this one is going to go on this design. So that's the sprocket. And you can like offset it or you know have your have your spikes all go the same. And do a little slight offset. So they kind of there we go. And then we'll add the backing to it. So the little cap goes on the back. There we go. So it snaps and that's just it's not together but it's just holding it for now until we actually press it down. So in this case, we would have that there. We'd set it in the groove, and then I would take this one here and set it on top as well, and then hammer it down. And you want to you know, hammer pretty well so that it smashes it down. But I'm going to go ahead and use my press. My press already has a set in there. And then we just gently bring it down, press, and it's all set. And there we go. So that just added our one cog on there. And you can always push it up if you want, you know, bring it so to give it a little bit of a, a three-dimensional look to it. We'll go ahead and add the other ones. This one's a little bit smaller one. And this hole is not set in the center there. I offset this one here just to give that different look. So we've got, you know, layered look of our cog wheels. So that one's a little offset. It is not in the center on purpose. We add the backing piece, it does a little snap. I'll go ahead and put it in the press. Give a gentle push on it and it's all set. Smash down. And I got one more to go. This one here. Same thing if you want to offset it a little bit. They don't match exactly, but they're they're a little bit. Depending on where you want or what you want to hang out. Same thing, I'm going to add that little back piece, pop, pop it on there, do a little snap. It's on there, but it's not stable. It can pull off. Let's see if I pull it, it will pull that. It'll pull this uh, cap off if I want to. But uh, there we go, and I'll set this one. Make sure it's in the center. Press down, give it a little push, and there it is. It's all set as well. It's perfect. 
And this is my, um, let me see if I can get, all right, and then I've got my stick. And you can wear this either way, however you want. I made it so that this kind of was the top where the small thing is. So I'm going to put the, our, and then you can even probably get fancier and like maybe paint this in a copper or something, or if you have one of the metal ones, which um, I do, but I don't remember where I put them. I do have um, some of the metal ones, the brass ones. So it'd be, you know, pretty cute here. So this is the three dimensional or 3D steampunk hair bun holder. Um, so I think it's actually, it's under steampunk 3D hair bun holder by Bad Bobbin. And there we go. So if you enjoy my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you enjoy learning about how to do the, the rivets and this little 3D cute thing. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below if you have any other suggestions or ideas that you want me to touch on. I'm here to do that. And ring the bell. You'll get more notifications when I come out with new videos and new ideas for you. So here we go. Thanks for joining me. See you at the cutting table.